Hello, welcome to my short review of the HPI racing diecast model on 43rd scale Mazda 787B in uh, plain silver. So this isn't the liveried, race liveried car. So um, uh, here is the same car in a race livery. This is a Spark model that you're seeing here. So different model manufacturer. Um, anyway, I've got a separate video on this particular model. And in fact, I have a 767 here, which I do have another video of too. So this is a Q model car, and I love the detail on this Q model car. The wheels are fantastic on it uh, in terms of the, the detail. And uh, just generally, I do particularly like that one, but I did actually see that actual car physically racing at Brands Hatch in England in 1989. So, um, Let's get this one out of the box. So I've got a card here. Um, they've always got nice cards, these ones. Um, and there we go, once it decides to focus on something. Okay, so let's slip this one out. So it's got a, as you can see, the box is square. It's a much bigger box than normal because the engine cover is detached. Uh, so let's just get that out. Now there should be a seal here, but there isn't. So it should be okay just to ease that off. There we go. Right, okay, so. Okay, excellent. So, now, like I say, the key to these HPI models is that they are opening models. So um, we've got this piece here. Now I'll need to um, unscrew both of these from the base in a minute, but uh, let's have a look at that tyre, okay. Um, so obviously this is a four rotor and you can see actually in there you can basically see the four rotor, well, it feels like, hang on, let's go around to this side. Basically down in there you've got the uh, Wankel rotary engine. So you've got suspension detail there. Um, excellent. They, they look like they're actual springs. Yeah, okay. Yeah, not bad at all. And uh, great. Look at that. What a lovely model. Yes, this would have been great in the livery. But actually you can see the car for what it is better without the livery. Because you can see all the detail around here, the venting, the door panel shuts and things like that, which you would normally get lost within the colour scheme. So, um, and, uh, let's see if we can get a look in. Mm, I'm struggling to look in. Let's see this way up. Not really getting to look inside it. So of course, as with most of these Le Mans cars, it's a right-hand drive car and that's not because it's a Japanese car. Even the Porsches and the Ferraris will right-hand drive for Le Mans and those uh, most racing cars up until the 80s would have been right-hand drive really. Um, they started creeping in in the 70s but early Ferraris were only available in right-hand drive for example. So right let's see if we can get this off the base. Right there's my screwdriver. And if we look at the bottom, yeah, okay, that's going to be straightforward, I think. So I've got to hold the car very carefully. I don't want to squish the aerials. There were two aerials on the roof, very fine detail. So I'm doing the car first. There we go. Excellent. And I'll now do the engine cover. And then we can play with how they fit together. All right, that's off. Let's put that over there. So, now the engine cover actually has come off with its mounting piece, so I should be able to unclip. That's, oh, yeah, okay. So I just had to pull, pull that that way and it unclipped. Right, okay, so let's have a look at that. Look at the paint finish. Fantastic. Lovely metallic with very tiny metallic particles, so scale particles and uh, this is actually metal whereas the rest of the car is resin die cast so uh, just to get that 
stability of the molding so it doesn't distort. Um, so what have we got going on here? I've got, uh, I need to take that off so it sits on the ground properly. There we go. Pop that over there. Right, so you've got a nice amount of under floor detail. The tires are, oh, they're just a bit grubby, really, a bit grubby. Um, I could probably clean up a bit. Right, let's turn it over. So you can see the two aerials on the top, very fine detail. And we've got to be really careful with those. So let's see how this goes on. And, uh, oof, yeah, look at that shot line. <laughs> you don't really, you're not going to get a better fit than that, are you? That's um, that's something else. That is spectacular. So you get a good looking car either way, you know, with the engine cover off or with it on. It's, um, yeah, to see it without the livery. That's uh, quite something else. So you can see down into there to the uh, radiators. Uh, you've got the exhaust and the venting detail there and the wheels. Um, Dunlop. Yep. And you've got silvered wing mirrors there. Look at that. Absolutely fantastic. So do do have a look on my... Um, oh, something beefy going past. A motorbike. A couple of motorbikes actually. Maybe three there. Anyway, do have a look at my other HPI Le Mans cars, and I've got some other brands of Le Mans cars, such as, what have I got? Spark, a few Spark ones. Um, so do have a look at those videos, and I've got a playlist for the Mazda 787, so you'll be able to see that too, I believe I have, hopefully. If not, I'll make one. But uh, yeah, all in all, beautiful model, well worth it. I mean, ones with delivery of this, uh, you're talking over 200 American dollars. So these aren't cheap. This one I got relatively cheap, partly because it's a plain color model. And I think I bought it from the UK. Where there's maybe a bit less demand for the Japanese manufacturer cars. So um, thank you for watching. Do subscribe to the channel. Uh, do have a look at my playlists. And I'll be coming out with more as time goes past. Like I say, we've got this one and this one too. And they're interesting videos to watch as well. Okay, thank you. Take care. You'll hear from me again soon.